G'day YouTube. Happy Mother's Day to all the men out there. Happy Mother's Day to all the men out there like this who have contributed greatly to Mother's Day. Not just contributed, but contributed. Alright, let's go. <laughs> so yeah, here in Australia, it's International Women's Day. Not Mother's Day, I think I said Mother's Day. It's uh, International Women's Day. And uh, just wish everyone a happy International Women's Day, whether you're whatever kind of breed of human you are. Congratulations, and I hope you enjoy your life. And um, the hospitality, this message has been brought to you by the hospitality organization and industry. Now, welcome to the virtual hotel. It's a normal day for the staff in our virtual hotel, but this workplace is not as safe as it should be. Your task is to identify and safely address all the hazards in this workplace. Use your mouse to identify and click on potential hazards. Then choose the best mess then choose the best best method to eliminate or reduce each hazard. Some hazards can be fatal, so think carefully before you act. A hazard is basically any situation or thing that has the potential to harm you, other workers, or customers. When addressing a hazard, make sure you use the most effective method by working down the hierarchy of risk control. At number one, elimination. Elimination, WWE. If you can get rid of the hazard altogether, substitution. Replace the hazard with something less risky. Isolation. Physically separate the hazard to stop people going near it or being exposed to it. Number four, engineering, changing the design or layout to make it safe for people. Number five, administration, change the way the job is done. Personal protection as a last resort. Use personal protective clothing and equipment. Enter the hotel, number one, reception. Yeah, keep an eye on the hazard level indicator in the top left corner of the screen. It will let you know how much danger is to alert. Yada yada yada. Let me just turn the sound on. There we go. Now this um, this board here, this board here basically just tells you how many um, risks and hazards you have to eliminate and fix and figure out. So we'll click on this guy. Very lopsided on the tape on the chair there. Or rather on the ladder. The cleaning contractor appears to be working unsafely at the top of that ladder. What do you want to do about this contract worker? Hold the ladder for him while he cleans the windows. Ask him to stop working and discuss his work practices with the manager. Speak to the manager about the cleaner's work practices. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yes. <laughs> Smart. I'm a big boy. Now. Okay. <clears throat> Let you read that and continue. Let's see what this uh, blue core wants outside. I'm blue. Da -da -dee -da -da -da. A new guest has arrived at the hotel with their luggage. How should the worker bring the customer's bags inside? Load both suitcases onto a trolley, then push the trolley into the foyer. foyer. Carry both suitcases together into the foyer. Carry the suitcases into the foyer one at a time.
Here we go, Mr. Joseph, from Peter the Hill, doing his best, working his job. Here the hill, Joseph is gone. Well done, a, tra a trolley is the safest way to move a customer's lug luggage into the hotel. <clears throat> Shut up, phone as it illuminates the need to carry the potentially heavy suitcases. Also, did you notice that the tro trolley was hard to push? Actually, no, it was too busy looking at the wall. More hotel guests have arrived with their luggage. What should the worker do to bring the bags inside this time? Fix the trolley wheel before loading on all the suitcases. Then push the trolley into the foyer. Carry all the suitcases into the foyer. Load all the suitcases onto the trolley. Then put the trolley into the foyer. King of the Hill, Joseph from King of the Hill is magic confirmed. There we go, Joseph. Good on you, mate. Uh, very good. I'm uh, proud of you, Magic Joseph from King of the Hill. Good work. You needed a trolley to carry all those suitcases. Now, I will read every single text, like especially text that end that um, appear right at the end of a mission or rather of a decision um, I won't read everything because then I'll be here all day but as I'm doing here just letting it be on the screen for a bit so you can read it the reception's job the receptionist's job is quite repetitive and requires the receptionist to stop to stand for most of the of their day. What can you do to improve the receptionist situation? <laughs> now some of these I've done before guys, so a lot of them, <laughs> Marshall. Sounds like they're saying Marshall all the time. Now a lot of these I've done before guys, but I'm just trying to test my memory and some of them I've forgotten or maybe some of them I've had. Actually, I think all of them I've done before, but let's see how well my logic still works, how well my memory is, and if Mr. Sorehead Bruno here has any logical sense left. Yay! <coughs> I think this was the hotel one. No, this, this is the um, diner. Now. The barista is boiling milk to make some cappuccinos. What is he doing wrong? The barista won't get a good froth for the, for the cappuccinos by making them this way. The jug is too, the milk jug is too full, he is not holding the milk jug properly. Do you feel safe being my co-worker now, people watching this video? <clears throat> Alright. The waiter is polishing the glassware after it has been washed. Can you identify a potential hazard here? She did not wash her hands before handling a glass, I do not know that. She's not using a clean towel, it looks pretty clean to me, but you do not know. You do not have to polish the glass without wrong, I think it's probably the last one. Well done. Some low quality wine glasses can be quite fragile and, can, and could easily break if you twist them too hard. Uh, eliminating the need to polish the glasses is the best way to avoid injury. This message has been approved by Clive Palmer. Uh, here we go. 
Empty fell. Oops. Why did the waiter slip and drop the plates? She is still on the job and doesn't know how to carry the plates safely. There was a spill on the floor and she was walking too fast in her high heeled shoes. She is wearing high heeled shoes and the change of uh, and the change of floor surface contributed to the slip. Uh, I'm killing it so far. Well done. The waiter missed the sudden change of floor surface from the carpet to tiles, and her shoes were not quite right for this type of work. These two factors have contributed to her fall. Your employer should advise you of suitable types of footwear for the work you do. A non-slip floor surface is best for high traffic areas. What's the problem? What's the problem with these doors? The doors need window. The doors are too heavy to open. There should be no doors at all. Uh, it's either the window one or no doors at all. Now I think, in order to avoid the hazard, I reckon to properly avoid there being any accidental um, dropping of hot uh, liquids by a quick snap of the door, I think because even then maybe the windows won't be able to 100% prevent that, so maybe no doors at all. Here we go, yep. So I was right. The doors were obstructing vision and easy access between rooms. Having no doors has eliminated the hazard by allowing others to have to see each other as they are walking through. And I think there's two more, even two more, one more to go. Here we go. What is the problem with this dining room layout? The tables and chairs were not evenly spaced. There are too many chairs in the room. You won't actually. You will think this would be one of the easier, easier ones, but it's actually quite a tricky dilemma. I mean, there are quite a lot of... I can't see the whole, how big the actual room is, but there does seem to be a lot of tables in one um, confined region of that room. Um, maybe this one, but I could be wrong. Yes. Although this layout is better, there are still some tight walking spaces that increase the likelihood of the waiters colliding with the tables and chairs. <clears throat> so obviously, uh, um, the other one. How should the waiter carry the plates? She should stack all the plates on top of each other in one hand and the glasses in the other hand. She should stack the plates along her arm and the glasses on top. She should stack the plates on top of each other, the glasses on top of the plates, and carry them above her head. Alright, just for comedic purposes, we'll pick the last one. Just for comedic purposes. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, now I'm losing my game. It's obviously the spill one. Like waiters usually do. Probably don't want to be my employer now, my co-employee now, do you? The table arrangement was too congested and it was difficult for the waiters to walk around to serve the customers. Narrow walking spaces could cause co collision injuries with other staff, customers or the tables and chairs themselves. Very true. 
This customer has been drinking at the bar for a while. He appears to be drunk and wants another drink. What should the bartender do? Give him another drink to keep him happy? Ignore him and hope he comes down? Ask the manager for help. How do you ask for your manager? Good work. The manager has politely told the customer that he has had enough to drink and escorted him off the premises. What should be done about this bin? Squash it down so you can fit more waste in there. Empty the bin. Use fly spray on the bin to kill the flies. Let's do another comedic answer. That didn't work. Fly spray is not a good idea where food and drinks are served as it can contam contaminate the food. Oh, well, would you look at that? Empty the bin. If I must. Good hygiene. This bin was a hygiene problem, so not get this full. Bits with food scraps or places where mold and bacteria can grow very quickly. They are best kept covered and should not have a foot pedal to open them. They should have a foot pedal to open them so you don't have to touch the surface. Oh no! I should have done the hazard first. You missed the broken glass on the floor. A new customer has now slipped and cut herself in the broken glass. When assessing any situation, oh my goodness, deal with the most immediate and dangerous hazards first, such as broken glass. Yes. Pay attention, Bruno, pay attention. Uh, a beer glass has fallen off the table and smashed on the floor. What should the bartender do about it? Take it all, wrap it in a newspaper, put it in the bin. Pick it up, pick off the glass and put it in the broken glass bin. You sweep that up. Well done. Handling broken glass with your bare hands is likely to cut you. This dustpan and bird will also sweep up any small pieces that you can't see. There should also be a bin just for broken glass disposal, but the other bin does not become a safety hazard. Just gonna get this one out of the way. I like that deer on the red wall over there, on the Soviet wall. Nice Soviet, um, nice Soviet deer. He was always going down. One of the beer taps has run out of beer and the bartender needs to connect a full keg to the beer line. How should the bartender move the beer cakes? <clears throat> Excuse me. Lift the keg, use a trolley, roll the keg. Actually guys, what I should do is, if you guys want to, just write down the comments before I type it in. Write down which answer you think is most likely, if you want to. Okay. I was thinking, cause, um, I was thinking, what if, uh, there's a, like a special rolling machine or something, but yeah, that makes more sense. The trolley is the safest way to move the heavy beer cakes as it does not put any strain on your body. <laughs> 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 
The manager has asked the bartender to clean the beer lines, which involves using chemicals. What should the bartender do? Well, if he's not sure which one is which, which can be very harmful, ask the manager. So what if he connects, you know, like he connects it with like a nuclear explosion or something? Smart thinking. If you don't know what you're doing, then it's best to ask. Using the wrong chemical could damage the burn, the beer lines, or burn your skin. You should be trained in the correct handling of any chemicals before you use them. Instructions for cleaning the beer lines have been displayed near the clicks to prevent injuries. We got the hotel suite now. The hotel customers have just ordered room service and their meal is ready to deliver in a hot box. How should the waiter load the hot box into the trolley? Now let's do a funny one. Mm. The hot box is used to keep the food warm, so it is very hot. Remember, hot box is hot. Hot box is hot. Alright. Here we go. To go. <laughs> oh. Alright, enough silly answers. It can be quite funny, the wrong answers though, the animations. Well done, this is the safe way to lift something heavy like the hot box. Bend your knees as you place your feet around the hot box, keep the object close to your body and straighten up through the legs. Because the hot box is hot, remember that hot box is hot. The hot box is a hot box. You should always use the handles to lift it. What should the cleaner do first to make the bed? Ask the other cleaner to help move the bed out, look under the sheet, then pull out each corner of the sheet in the middle, into the middle of the bed, ask the other cleaner to help move the bed, then pull the sheets off the bed, lift the mattress up, then pull out each corner of the sheet into the middle of the bed. Look how green, look how much algae or is in that sink. <coughs> well done ladies. Good, um, you make a good team for International Women's Day. Um, um, hopefully it didn't sound as bad as I, because they didn't sound as bad as, as, as it was in my head. Um, to know it's International Women's Day, come on, there's some recognition. <coughs> oh no! Oops, the cleaner has slipped on the wet bathroom floor into the lower back. When assessing any situation, there is the most immediate and dangerous hazards first. Come on, Bruno, pay attention, think. What should the 
Clean up this mess. Probably should have read a little bit more of that, but anyway, I got it right. But yeah, I gotta pay more attention and read it. This customer is trying to reach a carton of beer from the stack. How should the attendant help this customer? Get a cold carton from the cool room, lift down the highest carton you can reach, stand on a stool to reach one of the top cartons. Just do this one. Why well, you gotta go to go to real trouble, which you can just simply get one really quickly from the cool room. In the cool one in the, the ones in the cool room are probably better anyway. <clears throat> it's a robber. <laughs> An armed robber is demanding that the shop attendant hand over the money in the cash register. What should the shop attendant do? Give him the money, then call the police. Don't give him any money and tackle him to the floor. Tell him there is no money in the cash register. I'm gonna do a funny one.
Thinking. So would you be caught in an armed holdup? Always co cooperate with the robber. Try to observe them as carefully as you can. What you remember will help the police. You should only call the police after the robber has gone. After the robber has done one, to use British slang. New beer kegs have been delivered in front of the shop and need to be moved into the cellar. How should the attendant move these kegs? Of course, you use the trolley, the mighty trolley. The almighty trolley. This trolley the almighty trolley is specifically designed to move these heavy kegs without causing any strain on your body. When lifting heavy objects, either use lifting equipment or share the load by asking someone else to help lift. What should be done about these gas cylinders? Check the pressure of the cylinders, move the cylinders against the wall, chain the cylinders to the wall. That's it, the gas cylinders need to be secured in place. The cylinders could easily have fallen or been knocked over by someone. If the neck is broken from a fall to the ground, they could explode as the contents are under high pressure even when half full. Time to do some gaming, and there goes half the viewers. <laughs> An electrical contractor is busy fixing one of the wall lights. What should be done about this contract worker? Some of them I remember, some of them I've forgotten. Some of them I have to use my common sense, but I remember this one. <laughs> what should be done about this door? Take down the exit sign. Keep the door locked. Keep the door open. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Keeping the door open is not good security. Oh my god. Take down the exit sign. I don't think so. <laughs> Keep the door unlocked. Anyway. <coughs> there must be emergency exit routes from all rooms in the hospital. Yeah. 
The door on this gaming machine has been left open for the money to be collected from the large cash box. What should the <laughs> worker do about the cash box? <coughs> the door should not be left open as on the gaming <coughs> machine as this is not good security. But the hotel should have a security policy that is discussed with all staff before they work, before they start work. However, there is another hazard here. Be carefully, do not pay attention. I think smaller cash boxes. Because those seem way <laughs> Well done, there are two problems here. First, <laughs> yep, as I said before, the door being left wide open, and yeah, yep, yep. Uh, secondly, those cash boxes are too heavy for staff to lift and carry. <laughs> Repetitive lifting of heavy objects will put strain on your lower back. Yeah, you don't need cash boxes to be that large, my goodness. <laughs> two more to go. The air in the smoke. The air in this room is causing discomfort for some of the customers. What could the worker do about this smoke? Ask the manager to put improved ventilation. That's not a good idea. That's, that's a good idea, but I'm pretty sure it's this one. So people get the hint and the message. Well done. The customers will have to smoke outside. <laughs> this has eliminated the smoke and is the only effective way to avoid negative health effects of exposure to tobacco smoke. <laughs> Note that in South Australia, where I live, smoking is banned inside all enclosed areas of licensed hospitality <laughs> venues, including pubs and clubs. Pubs and clubs with Dr. <laughs> Henry's practice. <laughs> oh, you guys probably think I'm a nut. All right. What should the worker do about this angry customer? Suggest that the customer may speak to the manager, or you wish the customer ignore the customer. Oh, I'm not gonna do this anymore. Just sensible. <laughs> <clears throat> Here comes the kitchen, the kitchen section. The kitchen section has some funny ones if you get them wrong. <clears throat> Does this look safe? What could be done to improve the safety of this process? Replace the cleaver with a small sharp knife. Replace the cleaver with a small sharp knife and stabilize the topping board with a towel. Stabilize the topping board by spreading some flour underneath it, obviously the middle one. If you say no, if it isn't, then you're just lying. A boiling oil has been left unattended on the stove and is spilling over. How should the worker clean up this mess? It's the middle one, alright? Definitely the middle one. Nice work, you fixed the hazard. Turning off the gas was the first thing to do here to avoid a potential fire. Covering the pot has stopped some more fat from spilling over and mopping the fat up with degenerates. No, the de de detergent has broken up, has broken down the grease to prevent someone slipping later.
the pot is boiling away with some fat people. All right, no, no, with some fat splattering all over the gas the stove. Stove top. What should the worker do here? Put flour on the fat on the fat surrounding the stove and pot. Your safety guru! I know it, I know it, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> this meat sli slicer looks dirty and the safety guard is removed from the machine. Alright, now I'm gonna, I am going to answer this one sensibly. And if I get this right, then I am the ultimate safety guru and you can be you can feel safe to be my co-employee. If I don't get this wrong, if I do get this wrong, then um, you'll probably run away from me. Okay, this, yep, 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 this will be done. Here we go. Oh, I'm sick. That was the first one. The gorge was not in place, and there could have been cuts, or worse, and FPG. Machine, this reminds me of uh, the auditor's machine, those uh, like public um, public health announcements or something. I'm not sure exactly what the exact um, advertisements are called, but it's like public um, health um, announcements. And it's basically like if people um, in the workplace, and if someone does something a little bit wrong, like um, carrying carelessly a hot boil of uh, um, of oil and not looking where they're going, um, they can very easily. Uh, and this that the lady has like a burnt face. There was a man who got um, his hand stuck in a machine. Oh man, those those uh, those um, public health announcements make you think. I don't need their health, the mother's health. But, but anyway. Let's electrocute him. <laughs> oh no, the chef was has been electrocuted while pulling on the fried cord. Alright, let's do it now, let's do it thing quickly now. <laughs> That's funny. No! Fire! Think quickly and act fast. Okay, quickly draw something on the fire to put it out. Grab the fire extinguisher on the wall and spray over the fire to put the. Um, grab the emergency fire blanket and try to put the fire out. Okay, grab the fire extinguisher on the wall and spray over the fire. The fire. Okay, no, no, no. Like not the first one. Oh my god. Okay, okay. I'm not sure how confident you guys feel with me knowing that this is probably how I'm acting when it's not even a real fire emergency. Um, hmm. uh, uh, I stood it on it with the blanket. I stood it on it with the blanket. I stood it on it with the blanket. Did you, did you know that different fire extinguishers are suitable for different fires? That fire, I was thinking about that in my head. I was actually thinking, what if it's not the correct fire extinguisher? Ugh, that's what I was going on in my head. I just pressed that because I thought, you know what? But, I just thought, what if I put the emergency blanket on there, but, um, and then I did something else stupid, like put more water on it or something, and it had electrical fire everywhere. That's what I was thinking maybe that the animation would do, but yeah. Um, the fire extinguisher was all 
water extinguisher for wood and paper fires. What's it doing in the kitchen? You need a wet chemical extinguisher for fires including involving cooking oils and fats which is marked by an oatmeal colored band, light brown. Yeah. They also look like some workers had trouble getting out of the building. Every workplace must allow for fast and safe evacuation in the case of an emergency. So with this, the pot is boiling with some flat spot splattering all over the gas stove. Oh, yep. <clears throat> My voice is starting to go now. Here we go, obviously. <laughs> Good decision, and a registered electrician knows best. Okay. This board has been used to cut meat and needs cleaning. How should the worker safely clean the chopping board? This one? Okay. Well done. Substituting a chemical for an uncoercive one is the best way to prevent burns. Plastic soda is a coercive chemical that will burn your skin on contact. A material safety data sheet describes the properties of hazardous chemicals and how to treat and prevent injury from accidental exposure. Oh, we're in the back. In the back room now. Or would we say the... What would be here? The, like the... Um, like the detergent room or something. Here we go. <laughs> That's the way. This is the best long-term solution. While it may be expensive to resurface the floor, it's cheaper in the long term as, ex as accidents can cost your business. Many trips and falls can be prevented by training and safe work practices. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, add it to carpet. Let's do that. No. Ever uh Ah oh, no. <laughs> You're only half correct. Although a handrail provides good support. The poor lighting could result in someone, of course, a stork. Obviously, a stork down there. And someone falling over unseen hazards. If you can't see what where you're going, the carpet is not much use. Uh, I'm just gonna do the same thing, I bet. And just leave. <coughs> yep, just leave. Just leave. That's all you have to do. Oh, uh, you, you're coming back? Okay. There we go. Yep, 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 yep. Let's see what he does this time. Ah. Oh, come on. Come on.
That guy likes to trip. The delivery guy likes to trip down. Or he's very clumsy. Yeah, leave the boxes for someone else to do this. Slacker, it's your responsibility to alert your employer of any potential safety hazards in the workplace. Don't be a slacker, Steve. Get, there we go, Steve. Good job, Steve. Well done, Steve. The boxes were blocking the exit and could cause access problems in the event of an emergency. Exit in high traffic areas must remain clear to ensure safe evacuation procedures at all times. It's gonna slip again. This man needs help. What should be done? Oh, I think that's what I was doing wrong. Lighten the load by carrying one box at a time down to the cellar. Give him a trolley to move the boxes down the stairs to the cellar. Help him carry the boxes and request smaller boxes in the future. Because we need the packages, but we need to do it in the right way. It's the architect. This is expensive though, perhaps there is a better solution? Perhaps, perhaps. Let's see. Actually going back, I think a good solution would be... Um, a good solution may be to not order everything all at once, because it seems like the delivery person, delivery man was carrying a lot of things, I think there were he was, he was carrying like a whole month's load of things, in, delivering a whole month's load of things in there, and it, they probably doesn't need to do that all at once. Um, and um, and the other way where you help the delivery man do it all at once, it's very expensive to prepare and um, to help him do that and to um, get all the right equipment for him. So it's best just to order some things at a time. That's my solution. The bottles of recycled detergent and soft drink bottles used to store chemicals. What's the problem here and what should be done? Label all containers properly according to the contents of each bottle. Yep, yeah, yeah, this one. Oh no, wait. You don't know what's in- of course, of course. Uh, that's not what I meant though. When I said that, I meant for like- uh, I meant like- You- Okay, this is what I meant. I meant- that you erase the cola bottle, like you get rid of the uh, the label, then you find out and you get someone else who finds out who did it, and they put the correct label on or you, or they ask you to do it. Right? Of course I don't know what's in each bottle. That's correct. Having unlabeled substance, substances around the place is not safe. Disposition of the bottles properly and buying new ones with suitable labeling, la labeling and safety information is the only solution here. Chemicals in a workplace must be clearly labeled to include the names of the substance, all ingredients, details of the supplier and what to do if you come in contact with the substance. Yep. I know there's probably, I know there was some business of, I've been to, not that I've, not the businesses I've necessarily worked at, but just, I've noticed stuff like that, that they just have things like, um, really unorganized, they don't, um, know which is which, and, um, thankfully it's, uh, I don't think anything has really bad happened from that, but it's, it could. My name
Bruno, uh, I just put Al. Your job title. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put. Uh, agricultural. Okay, thank you for watching, guys, and peace out. Actually, let's go back here. My job and title includes pork ranging. Pork ranging. Um, all right, creative artist. Um, agricultural volunteer. I didn't fit it all onto the screen anyway. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching and peace out.